This is a JMT 242-ton 12-foot hydraulic press brake. It's equipped with a Dell MDA 56. We're going to do a brief control demonstration. On the control, I've got I have manual screen, program screen, auto, and semi-auto. I'm going to go into program screen. The machine has a tooling library. I can have up to 30 punches programmed. I'm going to I'm going to quickly go in and program a punch. This is a Willa 815, BIU 815. The tool heights, it's asking me for tool height, 6 inches. Tool angle I know is 30 degree. A length, 2.3. Straight up. Like the other side. 0.86, I already dimensionalized this. Come back to this angle, it's actually a 135. Four inch. See, that's our tool. We're going to change data. It's, uh, I'm going to name it, so I'm going to call it. I can give it an alphabetic name or a number. It's asking me how many tons per inch this tool will take. The control needs to know that so we don't damage our tool or, you know, it's a, it's a safety. Uh, 34 tons a foot, so per inch. I'm going to say 2.5 per inch. The length of tool that I own or have. 100 inch, let's say. Flattening height, 6 inches, it's the height of the tool. The shoulder head supported this in America, it's shoulder supported. There's our tool. Bottom dies. I have one through 60 bottom dies that can be programmed in this control. I'm going to go open spot, edit tool. Say tool height, let's say I had five inch tall, V angle, say it was an 85, V opening, say it was a two inch die, radius 0 0.1, 0 .5, say 0 0.25, I'm just making up a die, say 0.5, it'll finish, 0.5, there's my bottom V die. Now, same thing I'm gonna, as I was doing on the punches, you're going to go into the change data, give it a, a name. I'm just going to name this test. Interrets, how many tons per foot, or excuse me, how many tons per inch. Say three tons an inch. It's pretty high for a two inch die, but. I've programmed a new tool, tool number three. This test is the name of it. I'm going to delete it because it's just. Machine upper side. It's primarily if you do a massive change over a huge die block, a whole tooling configuration, you can you know, program it a different height. Same thing on the machine lower side. Program constants. Here I can toggle you know, between inch and metric globally on the machine. I have uh, multiple languages, a whole list of them, supported by this control. Help language, same thing. Oh, whoops. I have a material library. The machine knows uh, by the punch radius, V die opening, and the material, what tonnage it's going to take per inch to bend that particular material for its calculations. Also, spring back. I mean, stainless steel has a different spring back than steel, or I mean, you could develop coppers, I mean, different types of aluminums, the tinsel and the yield, you would enter them in and develop them. Program settings, angle corrections, Y1, Y2 parallelism, back gauge settings, speeds, retract points, uh, bottoming force factors. A lot of this stuff, if you turn lock it, you cannot change it, so it would be operator, uh, you know, supervisor toggled. Uh, pressure correction, 
global correction on the x-axis. So if you're, you're getting some parts and they're two or three thousandths off, you could do a three thousandths correction. The serial ports, if you're running a uh, barcode scanner, other interfaces, stuff like that. Back gauge, if you, if you say like this particular machine's got a 29-inch well, back gauge, I think. If you had like a 50-inch part, you could actually add another finger off the back gauge and uh, gauge it off of this and set up another finger or stop or change a different figure configuration. Event logging, uh, maintenance. This particular machine has eight hours. It's got 800 strokes, you know, testing at the factory. Tool backup. If I want to back up my, all my tooling, I've got it all drawn. I can back it up to a USB. It's got a USB port. I'm going to go into a product. I'm still on my program steam product drawing. I'm going to give it a number, you know, some way they keep track of them. Drawing number, again, I can put a number or an alphanumeric. And also plug in the keyboard. I'm just going to call this test. Uh, thickness, let's say, one of these 14 gauge. Still, like my material library, I'm going to pick still, my length, so, I don't know, let's say I'm 12 inches. My dimensions, am I concerned with outer or inner dimensions? Let's say outer. I can draw my part, um, say two. Maybe I'll just draw something pretty simple here. I go in the bin sequence, pick my tooling. I could go ahead and run this product. Now that we programmed our part, doing a bin sequencing. I'm going to show the bin sequence. I could change this anywhere, move any of these bins that I didn't, you know, optimize it for the way I like to run them. It's fine. Part with this part. I want to store. Now it's telling me the blank length needs to be 7.599 in order for me to get those dimensions that I programmed for that part. So it's done all my uh, bin calculations and stretch out and bin allowance has all been done for me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run this part, make sure it's loaded. Go to auto. I like to see the sequence so I don't, I don't so I sequence the part right so I don't mess it up. I'm going to go ahead and start the machine. Go ahead and bend that part that we just programmed. Apart. I'm just going to program a simple radius bin. I've got a Derma JMT 242 ton 12 foot press brake. I've got the Dell MDA 56 here. The bump. I'm going to tell it how many segments I want. I'm going to hit this eight times.
Pretty simple. Essentially, this could be 12 feet long if I wanted it to be. <laughs>